So I want to talk about the concept of hegemony. Uh, what is hegemony? How does it work? How is, is the U.S. a hegemonic power or uh, that kind of thing? So I, I see this sometimes. So I see this sometimes in my comments like this, uh, all good stuff. I would add two thoughts and he starts talking about it. Uh, the U.S. has a very powerful and far reaching hegemony and countries like China are reacting to that. I wish the U.S. would get more real with itself. The free world would be better for it. OK, so are you suggesting that the free world would be better off if you withdrew the influence of the United States? Uh, and just let a multipolar world, which is what Putin keeps talking about, a multipolar world uh, emerge in its place to take the place. Would that would that create greater safety or a, a greater sense of world peace or that kind of thing? OK, so what is hegemony? Hegemony is leadership or dominance, especially by one country or social group over others. And then there are some examples of hegemony. Nazi Germany was an example of military hegemony. Great Britain is an example of political hegemony. The United States is an example of economic hegemony. OK, now we're just going to think through this for a little bit. And I have an imperfect analogy and I'm telling you it's an imperfect analogy. So don't say you should have said this or should have said that because you got it wrong about the detail. Analogies by their nature, um, the details, you can't really look to the precise details. It's just trying to give you a flavor for this is kind of like that, but it's not holistically like that. Okay, so I grew up in New Jersey, about 20 miles from New York City. And where I grew up, it was like the UN. We had people of all shades and stripes there. That was just my experience growing up. Now, there were like U.S. citizens who had been there for a long time, and I'm going to just talk about them as citizens as a group. And then you had people that were maybe immigrants from other places. Like this is where lazy immigrants stop. Like my dad, his father got off the boat, went 20 miles inland and was like, I'm here. I have no need to travel 16 states over. Like, <laughs> okay. So this is how it works. Okay. Now within that group in my high school, you'd have different factions or different people groups, right? Now let's let's look at it like this. Hegemony. Um, let's use the U.S. citizens as the core majority group, and let's not worry about majority, minority, oh, minorities are, have to be oppressed or something like that. Let's. That's not what we're trying to talk about. But the U.S. citizens who are born here are the majority group, and that makes sense because they were born here, right? And then you have maybe this group, and that group, and the other group, and the other group. And so you'd have a bunch of Eastern European, Slavic, Russian, that kind of uh, crowd as one group. And then you'd have another group that's maybe um, Asian as, as a population group. They're a little bit smaller. And then you'd have a, another Hispanic group that's much larger. You'd have a black group that they, they tend to hang out with each other. And that's not racism. That's homophily. People tend to like people like themselves and, and tend to spend time with people that are like them. And, and they can cross balance and things along those lines. Now, within the majority group, you have the football players are the majority group. And the, and the football players actually pull from a few uh, Asian or Latino or uh, black or white or whatever else they, they pull from some, but they're U S citizens and they're, they're the majority because they're the citizen majority, the, 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 those that were born here. Okay. Now the football team, for whatever reason, in this analogy, if there's, there, there used to be some gang fighting, right. And there was a rule, let's say that if there's gang fights, you're not going to be able to play your football games. You're going to be suspended. If that happens, you won't be able to play. So they really, really want to play football and they don't want to have these fights go on. And so the, the biggest, baddest, burliest of the football player, the team captain, his name is Sam. Let's just say for the analogy. And Sam, in fact, in fact, his, the other players, because he's, he's a little bigger and looks kind of older, his friends call him uncle, right? Uncle Sam, you get you get what I'm trying to say, right? And and he it really wants to play. He wants to get to the playoffs. He wants to have his his you know big victory game at the end of the season. But he can't have that if he gets suspended. So if there's factions that want to fight with each other, if the Hispanics and the uh, uh, Asians want to fight, you no, know, you're not gonna. That we're gonna, we're gonna break that up. We don't want that. Now the analogy here is that being able to play is like the economy. And the United States, their interest is having economic world trade flow freely. I mean, that's pretty much what the U.S. Navy is about, right? Making sure that bad things aren't happening in other places to clog up the, the connections. 
And so, yeah, so th they're, they're not really worried about the football team. It's not really worried about, like, if two black guys want to fight with each other, you know, fight with each other and get over with it. But that's not really something that we're going to. But if you're starting a war with your group and your group are starting a, a gang fight, and then that, that's going to be a problem, right? We can't have that. Now, it used to be that there was a really large ethnic Eastern European Russian group at this school. And it used to almost counterbalance the uh, the citizens that were born here. And so there was really kind of almost a, a, a almost an equal, not quite equal grouping of between those two. And they were kind of standoffish. But then the Eastern Europeans over time started to become citizens and they kind of became part of the majority citizen group. That's somewhat like what happened to uh, after the Soviet Union collapses, those NATO, those uh, former Warsaw countries become NATO countries, right? I mean, that's kind of what happened. So now these Eastern European slash Russian groups, they, they feel pretty disgruntled. And they're like, you know, we used to be pretty big here. And, and now along the way, they started beating up on one of their own. His, his name was Vlad. And Vlad was starting to date, he was dating an, an American girl. And because he was dating this American girl and they didn't like it, they beat him up. And it was actually causing some controversy. And the football team stepped in because they were, there was actually about to be starting one of these gang fights. And the football team's like, look, you can't, this isn't going to happen. And they started supporting. Okay. So you see where I'm going with this, right? It's kind of like that. Now, what the people that advocate that this American hegemony is terrible want is to actually withdraw the positive influence of the football team. Now, it doesn't mean the football team's perfect, but they just want to tamp down the fighting so that they can play. Now, withdraw that influence and where's the rest of the world? Are the Chinese faction fighting with this faction over here, fighting with that faction over here? So if you have multiple factions able to fight with each other with nobody to kind of tamp that down and keep that going, how how well are the football team going to be able to play? Are they going to be able to get to their games? And again, my analogy is not perfect, but I think there's something to it where this multipolar idea is actually kind of a terrible idea. If you have a benign hegemonic force, a benign force that's not really trying to be hegemonic in the sense of, I want to take over this, like the U.S. wants to trade. They don't want to take your stuff. we like... When the Soviet Union collapsed, we were looking at Russia, hopefully thinking like, hey, great, there'll be a democracy and we'll, then that will be able to trade more and the economy will be even better. And it just never happened. It, they just never, it, it never materialized like they thought. Oligarchs, it became crony capitalism. It became very corrupt and it just never took off. But would the world be better off if there was not a United States slash European, and again, for the sake of my example, as an American, I'm using my own context, so forgive me for that. But would the world be, be better off if the Western power hegemonic forces withdrew and weren't a player, and then you let whatever the world, bad, there are bad people in the world, right? You just let them fester? Would, would that be better, or would it be better to have the system as it is? Now, to my mind, it seems like there's a benign influence of, look, I'm stopping this, but that's because I just want to play the game. It's not because I want to take over that part of your section of the school, or I want to take your stuff from your group over there. It, it's different in character. But if we let one of these other forces grow, I think some forces would be fine. Let's say the Hispanic force or the black force or the whatever, whatever those groups are. But the Russian group would be wanting to kind of take stuff from their neighbors or the maybe the, do you understand how this is working? So I think um, that's a good way to explain what's actually happening. But that's more like the leadership side. When, when we gave the example here of what hegemony is, that's really leadership or guiding, not dominance in the uh, hegemonic sense that they're using. But again, Russian propaganda, usually it reflects on, it, it projects onto its opponent what it actually does. While ironically, it's calling the United States a hegemonic force, it is heavily engaged with trying to dominate and take over former parts of its former lands is the way that they describe it. They're trying to conquer where the ones that they are saying are hegemons, the U.S., aren't really trying to conquer anybody. We're just kind of here trying to keep you from blowing the big game.
Does that make sense? Okay, that's my analogy. I'm curious what you think about it. Is it useful? Did that help you understand? Um, where did I go wrong? What could I improve? Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, the comments. I'm interested in your comments. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.